What's going on, guys? Welcome back to Network Chuck. It's been a second, been a minute. Wanted to just come on a random live stream on a Thursday just to hang out. Anyways, got some big news. First thing, I scheduled my OSCP exam. No, it's not clickbait, as someone might have said in the chat. First, let's get some coffee. Trolls. That's for you guys. Anyways, yes, I scheduled my OSCP exam. Um, mainly because I did buy their training or actually, no, actually, <laughs> step back. I partnered with uh, Offsec, and they did give me some training for free that included the voucher to take the exam, uh, but it's time limited, so <laughs> it's ex it expires on the 15th of December, so I had to schedule it. So I have my exam scheduled on the 11th. Now, real quick, can everyone hear me? I want to make sure everything's good. Jeremy's IT lab, SIP wasn't loud enough. Okay, let me fix this real quick. Is it good? Cool. Anyways, yes. Um, OSCP exam is scheduled for Friday, December 11th. And uh, two, two things off the bat. No, I am not ready. Uh, two, I'm going to try and get ready. I'm going to try like crazy. And uh, I will document the process as best as I can. No promises here, but I will try to show you what the process looks like. I'm excited. Anyways. If you don't know what the OSCP is, it's the Offensive Secure Certified. So I, I, I'm so new to this, I don't even know what it's called. What's it stand for again, guys? OSCP. It's from the people who make uh, Kali Linux uh, Offensive Security. It's what's what's the acronym stand for? Why am I having trouble finding this? Someone in the chat, quick, let me know. Offensive Security Certified Professional. Thank you. Tyus and Tal I don't know how to say your name, but thank you. Anyways, yeah, so I'm taking that sucker. Um, it's the one of the, actually, I'm going to go ahead and say, I think it is the best hacking certification out there. The best red teaming hacking certification. It's going to kick my butt, and uh, I'm excited to take it, and I'll tell you all about it. Um, anyways, let's move on. Uh, I'll cover more about that here in a moment. I want to talk about Mr. Kenneth Copeland. Um, I, I'm, I'm not a fan, but I'm not here to talk about him or what he's about. Uh, but it is funny that he got hacked. <laughs> so check this out. I want to show you on the screen right now. Um, this Russian hacker group called Revil, or Evil, uh, that's their name. It's kind of neat. Uh, they took care of him. Uh, apparently he, he laughed. Let me show you this laugh he did. He laughed when he heard that Biden won. Now, again, this is not political. I don't care about any of this. Um, but here he is just like maniacally laughing fake laughing that it's not real a little cuckoo <laughs> i'm gonna be straight up honest but i care more about the attack um they felt like he deserved an attack so they apparently hacked his servers got 1.2 terabytes terabytes of uh sensitive data that they're threatening to release that's a lot of stuff they commandeered everything to do with his servers and apparently they and they released a statement on the dark web and apparently they we don't know for sure what they used. We find the information. Ah, I'm just going to switch back to this. Apparently they used, they use RDP. They exploit RDP. Uh, so rule of thumb, disable RDP on any system that doesn't need it. Just best practice. Uh, if you do need RDP, change the default port. Probably the best case. Um, but yeah, that's how these guys probably got him. They're notorious. They do this kind of stuff all the time. So they, they, they got him. They got him. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> I... Anyways, that's all I got to say on that. Um, there is a new version of Kali. Let me show you real quick. Actually, before I get to that, Boson has a new version of their courseware out. I'll show you this real quick. Boson courseware for the Encore. Uh, that's the new CCMP Enterprise. If you don't know about that one, it's the prerequisite for your... It's the CCIE written, the new one, and it's also the prerequisite to get your CCMP Encore. So I'm going to be going for this as well very, very soon, uh, in light of my new uh, OSCP challenges. I don't know about that yet, but here we go, Boson Courseware. It's pretty lit. Let me show you real quick what it looks like. Uh, yeah, here it is. So yeah, Courseware, meaning it's going to have all you need in a succinct, nice little package. Nothing too wordy, like you might see in some OCGs and stuff. Not to disparage any OCG, those are fine and great, but if you want to learn something quickly, just learn the details of exactly what you need. Uh, those guides are what you need, so Link below for that. Uh, one more thing before I get to the... Now, in case you haven't noticed, I'm like going a million miles per hour because I've had like... 
a million cups of coffee today. So what are you drinking today? <laughs> if you want some coffee, networkchuck.coffee. I sell this stuff and it's delicious. Today I'm drinking uh, Tanzania. I'm like, I've had so much, I'm like jittery. Woo! Anyways. <laughs> uh, Kevin Bowley, if I learn to hack, will I be too cool for school? Yeah, yeah, you will. Hacking is the coolest. It's not, it's not what you think it is, though. It's definitely hard. Anyways, um, where was I before I derailed? Oh, um, this weekend, Pluralsight. You ever heard of Pluralsight? They're, they have a great training platform. I use them routinely for stuff I need to look up real quick. Um, I actually I watched one of their guys' uh, Docker stuff. It was amazing. But anyways, Pluralsight, let me switch to my screen here. Their free weekend's coming up. You get everything for free. This weekend, the 20th through the... That's this weekend, right? Yeah, <laughs> the 20th through the 22nd. Um, they have a million things up there. So check it out, link below. If you use my link, it does help the channel out. Uh, so go check it out. And they will be having some Black Friday sales. So don't forget to come back and click on my link so you can help me out. Anyways. Um, I'm just kind of blasting through news. <laughs> and then, then, of course, the new Cali version. It's, it's pretty cool. Nothing too like, wow, the new Cali... Let me uh, zoom in here real quick. I will get to questions here in a bit because we haven't hung out in a while. Oh, look. They got proxy chains 4 going on. Uh, sorry. Squirrel. But here's the highlights. ZSH is their new default shell. If you didn't miss that video where I talked about the 2020.3 version, they were introducing ZSH uh, to be their new um, shell over Bash. Uh, they're going to be partnering with Byte Bleeder for new tools. Um, AWS Image Refresh. Packaging guidelines, if you want to put your tool inside of Kali, they have some guidelines for that. NetHunter updates, new WinCAX for ARM, Vagrant and VMware now supported, uh, new tools, proxy chains 4 as default. You know, I love proxy chains. So some cool stuff, check it out. If you want to check out the new version of Kali, just, you know, APT update and and APT upgrade. Dash Y, get that sucker going. Anyways, how you guys doing? Anyways, um, I, I want to talk about real quick. I've been doing Security Plus content on my channel. I've posted three videos this week. What do you guys think? Honestly, what do you think about the content? I'm working with uh, David Bombal, Jeremy Chara. We're, um, we're working hard on it. We're going to have the entire Security Plus course under wraps pretty soon. No, I say pretty soon. It's, it's going to be done within a few months. Uh, but let me know what you think. And um, let me know what you think about the overall direction of the channel. I am, uh, I'll definitely be posting more CCNA content. I know I'm going to get questions about that. Yes, I will be doing CCNA content. I meant to have a video out today, but I was in a bunch of meetings, had a bunch of interviews with some people from, uh, I guess I can name drop real quick from GitLab and, and a company called Boxboat. I'll co I'll cover those here, uh, in the coming weeks. It's really cool stuff. Kevin Lopez said pseudo APT get coffee. Amen. That should Actually, that should be a shirt or a mug design coming soon. Watch out for that. Um, real quick, I want to I want to cover two things that I want to I want to kind of do between now and the end of the year. First is CCMP. I've been talking about the CCMP for a long time. I want to get my Encore. I just have not gotten it yet. I want to get it. So I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to try and get it by the end of the year because I now I have the OSCP looming over me to try and get. Um, but yeah, I'm going to tackle the OSCP and hopefully the Encore before the end of the year. And I want to be able to document that process. So let me know if you think it'd be a cool thing for me to, um, I don't get on Twitch. I do have a Twitch. If you want to go check it out, it's twitch.tv forward slash network chuck, I think. Uh, but I do want to like kind of do morning study sessions with you guys. And what I mean is every morning I'm going to get up the butt crack of dawn, uh, excuse my crew, crew language here, uh, and just study. And I, I can't promise it'll be entertaining content, but I just want to turn on the camera, stream it of me just studying. If you want to wake up and study with me, that might be helpful for you. It'll be definitely be helpful for me to hold me accountable, but let me know if you want me to do that. I'll stream on Twitch, get on there, we'll study, chat, talk about random stuff. Most of the time, just heads down, studying, labbing, getting that stuff done. Uh, so let me know. It's been a little bit since I've like heads down studied for a certification. Um, I mean, I did get the DevNet Associate earlier this year. Uh, what did I, I got, I passed a new CCNA, I passed uh, Linux Plus this year, yeah, it's, it's been a busy year, this year's been weird. Anyways, who thinks this is not live? This is live right now, I'm responding to you right now. 
Anyways. So, you know, I'll go to a few questions here. I promised my wife this would be quick. And um, I usually lie to her. Because I just can't, uh, I can't stop answering questions here. So, yeah, so let me know what you think about the Encore and the OSCP studies going live for that. And in general, what you think about the, the most recent content and the, and the direction of my channel. I'm trying to pull up the comments. Sorry, I'm just kind of rambling as I pull things up here. There they are. So we've got one from Ricardo. I'm going to pull it up real quick. Thank you, Ricardo, for the super chat. I'm going to send that to the stream right now. It says, Greeting from Mex greetings from Mexico. Your videos are great. I hope you're doing something related to Mexico. Uh, no, no, I want that super chat. Thank you so much. Uh, no, nothing related to Mexico anytime soon. Um, what did you have in mind? I, I don't know. I, I didn't know uh, <laughs> what to do with that. Uh, but anyways, thanks Ricardo for the uh, super chat. I got a super chat from, uh, who was it again? Felix. What's going on, Felix? Let me throw it up here real quick. Best IT certification for hacking beginners? Great question. So it depends on where you're at. Hacking, like many of the disciplines in, in IT, requires some prereqs. So if you want to go to cloud, knowing cloud is great, but you still have to know the underlying technologies that run the cloud, networking, systems, all the things that run it. Same thing with hacking. With hacking, you're hacking systems, you're hacking networks, you're hacking applications, you're hacking um, all kinds of things. To be able to hack those things, you have to understand how those things work. So you got to have a good, solid foundation. So if you're starting from zero right now, if you have zero IT experience, uh, you might want to go somewhere along the baseline of maybe your A+. Get the A+, foundational certification. I know people people kind of crap on CompTIA certs. I, honestly, I used to crap on CompTIA certs. But that was mainly because I was... I was at more advanced in my career. I didn't see the value of it. But now that I've stepped back and kind of looked at it, they are valuable if you're just starting out. Um, sorry, I just got a notification on my watch. They're valuable if you're just starting out, like for real. If you don't know how to build a computer, if you don't know about cloud or security, just if you have no idea, great base to just lay for yourself. Um, after that, if you're confident you want to go down the, the, the hacking security path, I would say Security Plus. That's the reason I'm creating the Security Plus course right now with David Bombal and Jeremy Chara, because I think that is the first step if you want to become a hacker, if you want to go down security. Now, not every security path is going to end in you becoming a uh, an offensive hacker red team. No, no, no. You'll you'll go down the security path and maybe you end up being a becoming a defensive security person, blue teaming. You're going to maybe a security professional in networking and you're defending systems and networks and all kinds. Of, like there's a there's a wide gambit of things you can become in the security realm. And it's often that you, you'll jump between each job title. You'll love it here. You'll move to this one. Like it, You'll never keep moving in IT. Trust me. Just find different roles, move around. But anyways, so Security Plus would be a good first step. Security Plus is great because uh, really anyone in IT, I think, should have Security Plus or at least have had it at some point in your career because it gives you a great foundation for uh, so many things. Um, it does satisfy some DOD compliance. After that, if you still want to go down the offensive uh, path, that's where I'm kind of iffy on because there's a lot of great certifications out there uh, and I haven't explored all of them. Right now, I'm going kind of going down the CEH path. I'll, I'll admit, I'm a little... Um, I'm not as happy as I thought I'd be with the CEH. It does seem kind of weak, weak sauce. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I've been going down it. It's cool. I've been creating videos. Like, you know, I, I created a DDoS video. My, my most recent one, I created a video about sniffing. And it's, it's, it's neat, but they cover stuff that's not really beneficial to a, a legit pen tester whereas the OSCP is killer more advanced for sure uh but i think i've heard really good things about the pen test plus now the comp t assert but i've heard good things in fact they just got their dod certified compliance for that uh by the way um and then the other certification which um i always forget the name of it let me look it up real quick it's from uh e-learn security they were just bought out by INE, if you're familiar with INE, the Internetwork Experts, and their EJPT Junior Penetration Tester. I've heard great things about. So check that one out. Uh, 
I, I may just go down that path or just take the exam to see how it is so I can recommend it to people like yourself. But yeah, that, those are the certifications I would look at. CEH is super expensive and it requires experience. So man, I'm having a hard time recommending that one at the moment. Honestly, kind of getting just bummed out on that one. Is my stream jacking up? That well, looks fine. Oh, coffee break. All right, I'm going to refresh my screen here so I can see all the latest and greatest. Appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Uh, if you ought to, always good to see you, man. Let me uh, throw you up real quick. Thank you for the super chat. It says, uh, thank you, Chuck, for your amazing channel. I recently accepted a network operations engineer job that starts in June after I graduate college. I don't know where I would be without your great content. Dude, that's amazing. Congrats. Like, you're not even out of college yet, and you got your first networking job. Super exciting. So happy for you. So that, that's amazing. Congrats, man. And I'm just, I'm just grateful and humble I can be part of your journey. Really, any of you guys, if, if I've helped you out, thank you for letting me be part of your journey. Seriously. Um, we got a super chat from Big Ego. Let's see. Is someone spamming in the chat here? That seems to be okay. All right, let's see. Thank you for the super chat, Mr. Big Ego. Currently in second CCNA course and doing a networking internship. Should I go for the Google help desk cert? Heard it goes well with the CCNA. I don't think so. Um, not to say that the Google help desk certification doesn't have great content in it. I just don't know if anybody values that certification yet. Uh, and if you want to go work at Google on their help desk, I'm sure they'll value that, right? I just, I say this all the time on this channel. I feel like a broken record, but I know I have a lot of new people to the channel. I mean, we just hit, where are we at now? 620 something thousand subscribers. Is that where we're at now? I don't even know. Close to it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so a lot of new people and all new faces. Um, with certifications, they are valuable for two reasons. First, and the knowledge you gain from them. Uh, that's why I love them because you can study like Docker. You can study how to, uh, scan a network. You can study EIGRP, but certifications will give you a holistic path to go down to learn something completely. So like CCNA is great. I'm sure you'll learn things in the CCNA you won't use in your real life job. Uh, but the CCNA gives you an entire package of guideline for a certain career. Same for Linux Plus, same for A+. Plus. Uh, so they're valuable for what you learn. The second reason they're valuable is because uh, of their marketability. Do companies want you to have that certification? Otherwise, there's really no value in paying for it. <laughs> you see what I mean? Like you, you can, if, if, if it weren't valuable to have it, actually just pass the exam, well, then you can just study for it, learn the information, and you're solid. Like, sorry, my, my, my baby's down there crying for some reason. Um, but it becomes valuable to actually pay for the certification, pay for the exam, and pass it if employers value it, if they look for it, if they were to do a job, if a, if a HR person were to like, okay, I need, a, I need to hire a network engineer, let me do a quick search and see if there's any CCNAs out there. Is it marketable? Can people actually find you because of that certification? I don't know if the Google Help Desk certification is to that level yet. Probably valuable in its knowledge. Maybe not valuable in its marketability. CCNA, man, that's gold standard of marketability. It's the gold standard of getting a network certification. Doesn't matter what vendor you want to go down and start working with, Juniper, Cumulus, I mean, whatever it is, CCNA is the baseline level knowledge you want to learn for networking. It's great. Um, CompTIA has a lot of that too. Um, so yeah, that's what I would say. So if you're looking at what to pair with CCNA. It depends on what you want to go down. Um, CCNA is a great solid cert to have, but you're, probably your first job is going to be some kind of help desk, some kind of operations job. So I would say if you're going to go for like a help desk level cert, A+. Plus, oftentimes, if people see that you have your CCNA, they're going to assume you have A plus level knowledge. So you may just be able to skip that process. CCNA, start applying. That's, that's more than enough in a lot of cases. Anyways, uh, big ego. Appreciate the super chat. Hope I answered your question. Again, probably has great knowledge in there. Super chat from Sin Security. Oh, by the way, quick, uh, quick thing. 
I uh, I will continue doing my Monday live streams. I know I missed the last two weeks just because of things. I went to a beach house um, last week just to get away. Just needed a change of scenery before it got too cold. Um, but I'm going to pick up the Monday live stream again, and I'm going to start having more guests on, more industry experts, uh, people in the hacking field, people in the security field, networking field, re really any field that I talk about here on the channel, I want to feature here. So uh, I would love ideas. Maybe reach out to people you know that I can have on the channel. I did a post on Twitter. I got some great ideas. So I plan on inviting some really cool people already, but I want to line it up, get them on. Hopefully the stream looks healthy. I keep seeing it like spin. So let me know if it like jacks up or anything. Anyways, uh, send security. Let me send you up real quick. Thank you for the super chat. It says, hello, I'm watching your CCNA courses. Any tips? How old do you have to be to get the actual certification? I, what is the age limit for CCNA? I don't even know. I know there's one for CCIE. <laughs> when I typed in Google, it was a weird return. Uh, I mean, I know Michael um, Hilton got his CCNA when he was 14. It might be 13 or something. I'm not sure. But um, kudos for you to like... Man, even look at this at such a young age. Anyways, you're watching my CCNA courses. Awesome. I'm so happy you're watching that. Guys, what do you think of my CCNA course as well? Um, how's it going for you? Do you like it? Uh, I know probably the biggest complaint is that I'm not, I'm not producing it fast enough. The number one comment I love seeing on the on uh, on my CCNA videos is, and it's a troll, I know. Um, man, I hope this uh, video course is finished before the new CCNA comes out. <laughs> so I, I appreciate that. I'm going to pick up the pace. I will. But I depend on you guys to let me know how it's going. Um, and make sure you watch it and like it and subscribe. Come on. Anyways, uh, any tips for CCNA? Yes, lab. Lab it up. Lab every single moment of every day for what you're doing. Like uh, if you're studying, um, I almost said OSCP, OSPF. Lab it. Everything you learn with CCNA, if you can lab it, lab it. Pack a tracer is your friend and uh, engage in multiple sources. Books videos, labs, boson, and, um, oh, flashcards, man. Flashcards are your saving grace. CCNA is a big thing. It's a big exam covering a ton of new things, especially if you're new to networking. Uh, a lot of new terms. Flashcards, using an app like Anki that uses a spaced repetition system to study is golden. I mean, oh my gosh, I still remember things that I don't even care about remembering just because they were in my Anki flash deck. So yeah, check that out. I should make it, I, you know, I haven't done a video on um, on good study habits in a while. Need to do that. Anyways, uh, thank you, Sin Security, for the super chat. Jimmy Jimenez, Jimenez, Jimenez. Thank you for the super chat. Let me uh, throw you up real quick. All right. This is high network Chuck. I'm a little stuck. I just graduated college and accepted a job offer at Google, which is awesome. Congrats. I know I will learn a lot, but I feel a bit stuck. I'm not sure what start to go for. I have four years of experience. Um, well, first of all, Jimmy, what, what are you doing at Google? Um, what is your profession? Like, what, what are you focused on? Is it programming? Is it help desk? What is it? I'll, uh, I'll kind of monitor, but I, I really can't give you advice. I, I would love to, but I can't give you advice on... Uh, non-specifics. You hear that sip? Hold on. There we go. But yeah, I, um, so you have four, four years of experience. You're at Google. I'm going to assume maybe you're dealing with help desk or maybe network engineering. Uh, my best advice right now, and the conversations I've been having recently with anyone in IT, uh, and that's start learning learn Linux <laughs> right now and learn, learn coding, start learning Python. I'm telling you everywhere I look in it, everywhere I look, it doesn't care. I don't, it doesn't matter what the discipline is. I'm seeing more programming come about. A lot of people hate that. And a lot of people are like, you don't have to know programming. It's, it's fine. Like right now you don't have to know that. Uh, but if you want to be, if you want to be aggressive in your career, if you want to accelerate, that's what I'm seeing more of. So I'm, that's just that's just how it is right now. Uh, let me see if uh, 
Yeah, Jimmy, let me know um, more about what the uh, what the issue is, and I'll, I'll try to come back to it. Let me jot it down so I don't remember, or so I don't forget. All right, let me refresh the page real quick here. Whew, I'm like feeling the jitteriness. I've had a lot of coffee today. Big Hoss, thank you for the two super chats. Um, I didn't see a question in there. Let me see if I uh, maybe missed your question. Uh, here's the question. Or yeah, here's a question. Just finished CCMP collaboration. Congrats, CC CCMP collaboration. Um, Cisco collaboration in general is my heart. I love it. I miss it. I do miss it. Honestly, um, should I go after security as well? Uh, if you want to, I mean, gosh. Collaboration is one of those technologies that when you go down, when you get to that point where you're at CCMP, gosh, you can make whatever amount of money you want. <laughs> it's, it's one of those things where not many people know it. And it's a valuable skill. It really is. So you can demand high dollar. When I was a collaboration engineer, getting calls, I, I still get calls. And I haven't messed with it in a while professionally. So I would say double down on collaboration if that's what you're doing. Um, if you're getting bored with collaboration, yeah, why not go security? That would be good. Uh, but I don't see a need to pair security with collaboration unless your job calls for it. Uh, if you're looking to like accelerate, I would say with collaboration, look at automation stuff. I know Cisco has their tracks, right? I, they, I mean, their collaboration track it does have an automation, right? Oh, let's see, CCMP. <laughs> I have to Google this stuff now. It's so crazy. No, I know, I know they do. They have an automation collaboration track. I would look at that. Certainly in Python, um, get go with automation. I don't see a, a real huge need to learn uh, security with collaboration right now. Mm. Some stinking good coffee right now. <laughs> oh, and also, guys, I uh, thank you so much for the uh, the results of my poll. I put a poll here on YouTube asking what content do you want to see. I asked about uh, networking, cloud, hacking. What did I say? Um, coding. And you overwhelmingly said you want to see more hacking stuff. Like 60% of you um, said hacking. So yes, hacking is going to be a stable on this channel. But of course, hacking, what I love, the thing I love most about hacking is that it's, it incorporates pretty much every technology. So I can teach networking while I'm teaching hacking and vice versa. I can teach cloud while I'm teaching hacking. It's fun because it incorporates everything. So I plan to do all of it. A lot of you said just all of it. Yes. And I plan to do more coding. Um, I, I, I keep telling you guys, coding is, again, becoming increasingly important for us in any job role we have. It's not like you have to learn coding right now or you might die. No, it's not that. It's that if you want to become effective at your job, more effective. And if you want to future-proof yourself, that's where I see things going. Uh, anyways, I'm going to stop uh, droning on here. Thank you, Big Hoss, again for the uh, super chat. Got a super chat from Day Rider. Bring it up here real quick. Ah, where'd it go? There it is. It says I'm an ethical hack I'm in an ethical hacking class in college. And I'm doing a project on different types of attacks. This is all really helpful. Thank you. Oh, oh cool. Thanks. I uh, appreciate that. The the coolest thing I, I, I hear I see in the comments is uh people referring to my videos for the college stuff, which is cool for me for, for one big reason. I don't have a degree. It's I don't have a degree. I, I didn't finish college. I, I took maybe a few classes, all non-technical. And um, yeah, so that my, <laughs> y'all know how I feel about college and degrees. If you're going, if you're in a degree right now, uh, keep going. Like it's, if that's what you want to do, if you feel a degree is going to add value to your life, do it. I don't have one and I found success. I believe you can hack your career. I believe you can skip the the main hurdles that people tell you you have to go over. You don't have to do that. You can you can hack your career. Uh, so it's cool for me to see that people are actually using my stuff who are going through college, but I don't have college. I don't have a lick of college. Appreciate that. Felix, thank you again for the super chat, man. Going crazy. Ask how much do the, does the CCNA cost? Um, the the exam to schedule it cost. I, I think it's still three hundred dollars, right? Um, yeah, I think it's three hundred dollars or three thirty. What is it now, guys? Anyways, yeah, it's one exam, three hundred dollars around that that amount, and uh, 
yeah, it's, it's not definitely not cheap. It's not cheap to get an industry certification. Uh, it does cost money, uh, but it does add a ton of value. I can't recommend certifications enough. Uh, and what do you need to study for it? The fantastic thing, Felix, is that there's a ton of free resources. It's, it's, it's part of what I'm doing here on this channel. I know that getting into IT is the best thing for so many people. Uh, and as far as like other careers, it's certainly cheaper. It's a cheaper path. Other careers, like you have to get a degree, you have to. And we all know that's not cheap, uh, especially if you live in America. Uh, but man, certifications, they're not bad. They do cost money though. So as part of like my mission on this channel, I try to create free content or at least low cost content that's accessible to you. But the beauty of CCNA content is there's a ton of free stuff out there. My course right now, um, Jeremy's IT Lab, who was just in here commenting earlier, great free course on, on, uh, on YouTube. Also like David Bomble, Got a great course, $10 on Udemy, or if you want to join this as IT, join that membership, you get access to that as well. So yeah, there's a ton of great resources. You can start studying for the CCNA, start learning for under 20 bucks right now. Packet Tracer, the, it's the best labbing platform right now, I, th I, I think, for CCNA. No, I don't think, I know. It's free, and you can get great CCNA training for $10. So you can start right now for the price of a couple, couple cups of coffee, depending on what you get. Gosh, I love IT so much. I love the opportunity we have. It's a blessing to be in this industry. It's a blessing to even know about it. So if you if you if you're I if you're aware of the path to go down IT, if you're aware of the training resources that you have, that's powerful. It's life changing. It truly is. It truly is. It's amazing. Anyways, let me refresh my page here. Who more super chats? Uh, let's see, one from Jared here. Throw it up here, Jared. All right. Jared, thank you for the super chat. He says, I'm looking to go from uh, not knowing anything, which is a good place to be because there's so much to learn. It's so fun. Uh, not knowing anything to getting my CCNA, then CCMP. Where would you suggest starting? Sorry if you covered it already. No, no, no worries. No worries. I will I will cover whatever you guys ask for. Uh, so if you're starting from zero, like knowing nothing. First, I, lo I love your I love your hustle. I I maybe wouldn't set my sights all the way to CCMP. And here's why. Um, you may not need it. Honestly, you may not need it. What I would say is if you're starting from nothing, you want to get a good foundation in IT. So I, I always say A plus is a great place to start because it's like a it's like a IT buffet. You get a little sampling of each area of IT, cloud security. Uh, I think it has a little bit on development, just a little bit. Uh, and of course, networking. So you get a little taste. And, and, and as you go through the A+, what often happens is you find one area that you just gravitate toward. You love. You're like, wow, that. The other sections I was kind of falling asleep in. But this one, I'm like, I want to dive deeper. This is amazing. And that's what you want to fall in love with. That might be networking. So if that, if that happens to be networking, get your A+, find that you fall in love with networking. Go get your CCNA. At that point, calm down a second. Don't try to get more certifications. Don't. Don't. Like, just don't do it. Right then and there, you're ready to find your first job. Start applying right now. In fact, you know, r r rewind. Right now, start applying for your first job. You don't know anything. Some people love that. <laughs> like, right now, if I could hire somebody that knows nothing but has drive and passion and is curious and, and can study uh, on their own time, that's 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 gold. You don't realize like how, how many people value that. So start applying for jobs right now. Entry-level help desk, say, hey, I don't know anything, but I want to learn something. Hire me. I'm ready. I'm studying IT right now. Nights, weekends, that's what I'm doing right now. As Cisco Panther says, I'm studying like it's a job. I'm studying it. I'm studying like it's my job. Eight hours a day, man. I'm going crazy. Now, you don't have to do eight hours a day. Please don't kill yourself. But uh, yeah, make that your thing. So I'd say A+, plus, CCNA, and then stop there until you get a good job. Uh, and then at that point, you can kind of evaluate where you want to go. Too many people will go, okay, I love IT. I love this. I'm going to design my path and go all the way to CCIE. I want to become a CCIE one day. That's fine. That's fine. But I'm telling you, you'll change your mind a million uh, different ways down that path. At times, I've, I've loved collaboration. I want to go straight on collaboration. At times, I've wanted to become a cloud engineer. At times, I've wanted to go down security. And now I'm looking at hacking. Like, you'll change, and that's fine. Uh, so don't don't be too hasty right now. Just 
hunker down on what you need to do right now. Enjoy it. And uh, you'll figure it out. Don't worry. Just don't become too cert heavy. Aaron Jones. Thank you for the uh, super sticker. Whatever that thing is dancing there. Flamed65. Thank you for the super chat. Let me find you real quick. Let's see. Kubernetes is just EJB for the cloud generation. An over-engineered, vendor-controlled, open, catch-all solution to a problem no one has. Thoughts. Well, it's interesting. I just got off a call with um, a CTO who's DevOps heavy, amazing, and we were talking about Kubernetes. So this is a perfect question um, that's perfectly timed right now. Uh, I don't think it's it's over. Well, I mean, it may be over-engineered. Uh, but I think it is addressing a problem in the industry. I think, uh, of course, Kubernetes is not the only solution that does what it does. Uh, container orchestration. I made a video. If you don't know what Kubernetes is, go watch my video on Kubernetes. Just go to my channel and search Kubernetes. It's there. Uh, it's certainly addressing a problem in the in the industry. Uh, we have to be agile. We have to um, deploy our things faster. Uh, we have to become more cloud native as we're moving to the cloud. A lot of buzzwords I know, but that that need is happening. Kubernetes is not the only solution out there. There are other things that maybe do it better. I don't know, but it is the one that's becoming adopted, and that's that's the key. The problem with our DevOps culture, my, my problem with it, it may not be the problem, but it's my problem with it, is that there's too many options, too many things like, hey, there's this tool, hey, there's this tool, hey, there's this tool, Puppet, Chef, Jenkins, like I, I, my head's spinning, and that's that's frustrating for me. Uh, so when the industry decides on one tool, when the, when the industry starts to converge and actually start using one tool, that's cool. So that's kind of like Docker. Kubernetes. Kubernetes is becoming widely adopted. It's becoming the standard. Uh, every cloud provider supports it natively. That's cool. So I, I think it is solving a problem that we have. Uh, it is helping uh, developers become more agile. That CI CD pipeline situation, uh, it, it solves a, a problem, I, I believe. So I, I appreciate your, your opinion on that, but I think it is a uh, it, it may not be the perfect solution. It may not be the ideal solution, but it is the one that's being adopted. And um, I think a lot of companies need that. They, they need that wide adoption. Um, anyways, I'll move on. I could keep going on that forever. Oh, you guys are killing me. I have to tell my wife I'm not coming down for dinner. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Okay, uh, John Corelli. Let me throw you up real quick. Thank you for the super chat. Says, uh, what do you think of the CPENT? And uh, when do you take your OSCP? So first, I, I have to look up the CPENT because um, I get lost in all the... Uh, oh, there it is, from EC Council. Um, OSCP, I'm taking on December 11th, Friday at 5 p.m., 1700. And I don't, I don't know what's going to go down. I'm scared. So I'll have, to, I'll have to really try hard to study right now. But uh, you know, you know what's funny though. Often when you when you s schedule an exam and you have a short time period, that's the kick in the pants you need, the pressure you need to make a diamond. That's, that's really, I can't tell you how many times I've just run out of time on something and just had to schedule it and put pressure on myself, and I ended up passing the exam. That's happened to me so many times. So if you're kind of in a between a rock and a hard place of motivation, it's a great way to get motivated. So CPENT is the Certified Pen Test Penetration Testing Professional. What level is that? Oh, it's launching on October 5th, 2020. Go beyond Cali. Go beyond automated tools. I don't know much about this. I'll have to look it up and uh, maybe make a video about it. But it looks it looks pretty cool. Let me let me put it on the screen so you guys can see what I'm looking at. Um, I mean, one thing the EC Council has going for it is it has some flashy looking cool stuff. Hacker, hacker-esque uh, looking things. Yeah, I don't know anything about it. If you guys know about it, let me know in the comments or the uh, the uh, chat. Anyways, thank you, John, for the super chat. All right, got a super chat from Ladislav Svoboda. Let me uh, get that in here real quick. Thank you for the super chat, sir. And um, said, hello, what about hacking hardware tools? like Wi-Fi pineapple or bad USBs. Do you have any experience? 
not too much. Uh, I always plan to keep, uh, I, I do want to buy some just to see what they're like. Uh, they're definitely good for, I think they're good for like novelty. Like the Wi-Fi pineapple is a different thing, but like bad USBs. I, I guess it'd be like, I don't know how often people actually use bad USBs in a pen test. Like do they, when a company hires you to pen test somebody, do they put plant bad USBs in the parking lot as part of the pen test? I don't know. They may, they may. Um, but those things are certainly fun. So I, I will feature them on the channel when I get a chance to get one. Hey, by the way, Hack5, if you're watching, send me some. I, I will review them if you want to send them to me. Uh, so if you, anybody from Hack5 is watching or if you want to tweet out to Hack5, I'll, I'll make a video about it. I just, I've never messed with them and I, I do plan to. But again, where's my, hold on. Oh, wait, I've got my cluster back here. Ah, oh, my Raspberry Pi cluster. I love tools like this that you can turn into hacking tools really easily. Um, a lot of the Wi-Fi hacks you can do, you can do on a Raspberry Pi. So it's such a versatile thing. You know how I feel about Raspberry Pis. Oh, love it. Put them back. Anyways, thank you for the super chat. Aaron Jones, great question coming up. That's funny. I was just thinking about this uh, the other day, reading my mind. Thank you for the super chat, sir. Going for the RHCSA, which is the Red Hat Certified Systems Administrator, I believe. How valuable is the certification? Extremely valuable for you know a systems admin that's Linux focused. I've often thought about getting this one. Uh, I got my Linux Plus this year, but I want to go deeper and kind of like, man. Most of the stuff I learned in Linux Plus, I probably forgot because I just I don't I don't mess with it every single day. Uh, a lot of things I do in Linux is rudiment, rudimentary, uh, basic. Uh, so I need to refresh my skills, and I think going down the Red Hat certification path will be fun. But yeah, super valuable for the enterprise. Get it. It's for real. It's going to be valuable on your resume. Uh, super chat from Nicholas or Nicholas. And I can't find it. Hold on. One second. I'll pull it up here in a moment. Maybe not. I'm going to try, though. I'm going to try. One, one more second. There we go. Thank you for the super chat, sir. He says, I have my OSCP and OSCE, which is the, the one step above, right? Crazy. I'll start in the coming days with OSEP, uh, which is a new, for, new cert from the offset. Let me see what that is. That sounds interesting. OSEP. <laughs> it pulled up the Office of Community <laughs> Education Partnerships in Northwestern something something. Let me see. Uh, they have so many different certifications. The offensive security people. The guys are awesome, though. Um, yeah, I don't know what that is. Doesn't come up. Anyways, um, good luck on your journey, and thank you for the well wishes. I'll let you guys know how it goes. Will Foy. Pull up your super chat here. It says, uh, prior service vet currently going to college for CNCS. Uh, let me see what that is. <laughs> I don't, you guys are throwing some uh, stuff at me. Some acronyms. Corporation for National Community. I, I don't know if that's anything. I'm considering it re-upping to join the Cyber Warfare, Warfare Command. Do you have any tips on DOD work? Nothing specific. I've never done DOD work. Um, I wish... I, that was my goal. It used to be that I... Um, I actually, when I was a network engineer, I did start down the path of getting my degree. I wanted to go to WGU, and I did for a while. Uh, and my goal was to get a government job. I wanted to work for the government. I wanted to do something in the DOD. It just sounded cool, right? It just sounds cool doing security for the government. Uh, but no, I wish I had more advice on it. Uh, best advice is just to get clearance, get uh, DOD um, certifications that, or DOD certified certifications like Security Plus, Pen Test Plus. Um, C E H, that's your that's your cup of tea. But anyways, thanks for the uh, super chat. I wish I knew more about it. Steinar, thank you for the super chat. Uh, saying I am learning about go anywhere at work right now. I have programming background, and this is kind of awesome for automating sysadmin security stuff. Go anywhere. I'm not familiar with that. Let's see what it is. Go anywhere. Secure file transfer software for enterprise. 
So managed file transfer. It looks pretty cool. I'm guessing just move files automatically without me on the screen. I'm assuming without VPN. That sounds pretty neat. Yeah. If you work for them, then you just got them free advertising. But anyways, thanks for uh, <laughs> uh, the super chat. Keep it techie. Thank you for the super chat, sir. Ah, where'd it go? There it is. It says, uh, just showing support. Thanks, Chuck, for what you do. Appreciate it, man. Chad Pevoy, thank you for the super chat. I don't see any messages. Let me see if I can find it in the uh, chat real quick. Oh, nothing else. Just appreciate it, man. That's awesome. All right, time is it now? Oh, I'm going to have to go soon. My wife's going to kill me. I'll check a few more things and I got to go, guys. But seriously, thank you for joining me on an impromptu live stream on a Thursday night. Um, it's super encouraging to have all you guys join with me. Uh, and it's, it's encouraging just to see all your stuff. I appreciate the comments. It's encouraging to see you studying and, and, and trying to change your lives and, and, and trying to go further in your career. I'm going to try and mirror that myself the best I can. And uh, I'll definitely be documenting my Encore and OSCP studies here soon. I'm going to go a little bit crazy too. I'm going to go crazy. I'm, I'm going to try and just double down on things. Abel Garcia. Thank you for the super chat. It says, hi, I'm coming from a programming background. Which, by the way, going into systems and networking and security from a programming background, that's awesome. I wish I wish I would have that because the, the, the opposite, I think, is harder. That's just my opinion. I think going into uh, programming from a uh, systems engineering perspective is super hard. I'm new to the IT field and want to start. What types of jobs do you know of where programming goes alongside with hacking, security, and networking? Great question. I literally just had a conversation with... Um, a high profile CTO, VC guy about this. And actually it was today, not just hours ago. You have the uh, potential to become what's called a unicorn. Unicorns are real, but they're hard to spot. They're hard to find. Someone who knows programming from a, a true, like not just like, oh, I learned a few things in Python coding, like, like kind of me, but someone who learned programming from a computer science degree, learned it from the ground up, knows the, how to do it well, uh, and, and they move into a role where they learn security, networking, systems administration, that's DevOps. That's DevOps. They are unicorns to know that stuff. So th this guy I was talking to, he, they have a company that helps companies move their stuff to the cloud. They, they have a hard time finding people like that who know both development and security and development and systems and development and networking. If you can learn those two skills, you're a unicorn. Unicorn Status means money, lots of money. Um, so that DevOps would be for sure what you want to look at right now, uh, especially with that development. That's what I would say. I mean, gosh, it's a buzzword. It is. But, man, you can make some crazy money going down that path. Keep it techie. Another super chat. Appreciate it, man. Looks like he's taking an exam soon. He's taking the LFCS, which I believe is the Linux uh, Foundation certified uh, something, something. If I have to look up one more acronym, guys. <laughs> Linux Foundation certified system administrator. That's the uh, that's that's the comparison or the 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 uh, competitor to uh, Linux Plus, I believe. Good luck and thanks for the well wishes and OSCP. I stink and need it. Chris Reed, thank you for the super chat. I don't see any comments on that. Let me see if I can identify if you had a question. I don't see anything, but appreciate it, man. Let me see here. Got a super chat from JW. I'll see if I can find it. It's going to make it hard on me. Try one more time here. There it is. Uh, thank you for the super chat. It says, I followed your video on proxy chains to the T. My config file was identical to yours. When I ran Firefox through proxy chains, nothing. Parrot OS help? Um, did you run it with sudo? Might want to run it with sudo. I, I, I'm, it's been a while since I made that video. I don't remember if running it with sudo uh, permissions or running it without sudo. I, I seem to remember something around running with sudo or running it without sudo actually helped. So I might want to try that. 
I don't use Parrot OS, but like in most Linux distros um, that are Debian based, it is Debian based, right? Is Parrot OS Debian based? What's it based off of? Yeah, yeah, it is. Based on Debian's testing branch, Bullseye. I think, right? Yeah. So you like, you like most Debian based uh, Linux distros. They're all pretty common, or all, they share a lot of similarities. Uh, but yeah, that, that brings me to another point I want to make real quick. Uh, a lot of the videos I make are based on technologies and, and configurations that are current at that time. I've been noticing comments on my Kali Linux in five minutes and WSL2. Uh, people have been having some trouble with uh, the new changes in, in Windows. So do you do you guys think I should make another video addressing those issues? Is, is that what you think I should do? Let me know. I don't want to make redundant content that you don't want to see. But if, if there is an issue with the configuration, I should make refreshes on that and possibly on this proxy chain. There may be another change that I don't know about. Uh, so yeah, let me know. Yeah, what's going on? All right, I want to refresh my page real quick. And then uh, you guys are killing me. All right, just a few more things here and I got to go. Logical. Super chat. Appreciate it, man. Pull you up real quick. This is after getting my AZ900 and my AZ103. Congrats. That's awesome. Thanks to your course on CBT Nuggets. So if you guys don't know, I, I um, my first foray into cloud was with Azure. I produced an AZ900 course, which is the, the, um, the uh, the beginner level cert for Azure and then AZ-103, which is now AZ-104. And that's for the administrator certification. It's, I I love cloud. It's so cool. Uh, so congrats on getting that. I'm studying for Security Plus. What are some studying tips that you have for someone coming from um, Azure? I'm assuming that's what you mean when you say AZ, Azure. Um, studying Security Plus. You know, Security Plus you gotta be careful with that because it can get boring because it is a lot of theory, which is why you see when I when I create Security Plus videos, I try to not just go. By the way, guys, here's what a water uh, watering hole attack is. By the way, guys, here's what a uh, what, I, I don't want to make it boring, so I try to show you and demonstrate as much as I can to to the best of my ability. Uh, so my advice for Security Plus is to keep it interesting for yourself. Try just to find real life examples as you're studying it, and uh, just. Try not to get too bogged down in the theory or bored with the theory. Try to make it real for yourself. Um, that's what I would say. If that's, I hope I answered your question there. Sasquatch, thank you for the two uh, secur or <laughs> security super chats. He says, look up RCDD. Let me uh, pull your thing up real quick. He says, look up Glenn Copeland and RCDD. Let me... Uh, Hopefully I'm not being trolled here. Sorry, I'm like reading something at the same time while I'm typing. Uh, is it registered communications distribution designer? Sounds pretty cool. Has something to do with uh, telecommunications and fun stuff like that. Yeah, I don't know. It looks pretty cool. I'll have to look it up. There's so many certifications. I, I don't know. I get, I get lost. <laughs> oh, he said yes. Uh, it's one of the highest design credentials in the information technology systems industry, recognized worldwide. I don't know about it. Um, it sounds pretty cool. So if, you, if you're interested in it, guys, look it up. And then uh, Jesse Dixon, thank you for the super chat. Let me see if you had any specific questions here real quick. Oh, he said, uh, tell your wife, uh, we said thank you for sharing <laughs> you with us. I will. Um, oh, Jeremy had a great live stream on getting started in IT today. Yeah, I, I jumped in and just uh, gave him a super chat. Yeah, Jeremy's fantastic. I, I, If you guys don't know Jeremy Chara, um, you should go subscribe to him right now. Um, just search Jeremy Chara. Uh, he's got a weird last name, so I'll have to type it in real quick. Oh, look, there he is. <laughs> Jeremy's in the house. Uh, you're as cool as a cucumber, my friend. Go make your wife happy. <laughs> um, Jeremy was my my mentor. It's still my mentor when I was starting my, my career. Um, I, st I studied his CCNA course on CBT Nuggets, 
And uh, he actually discovered me on YouTube, and, I, and he's the reason I got a job at CBT Nuggets. Uh, he's the best guy in the world, seriously. The coolest guy you can ever uh, watch or find. And now we get a chance to work together more closely on some projects. So it's dream come true. Um, so be looking for some really cool stuff coming around. Exciting stuff. I mean, gosh, I'm so excited for this stuff. Anyways, I'm going to look at one more Super Chat, and then I have to go. Seriously, I have to go. Otherwise, I'll be here all night. <laughs> I'm going to throw Jeremy up real quick. Keeping. There it is. There he is right there. Keeping it simple. Thank you, Jeremy, for the super chat. He's got to pay me back. <laughs> and then uh, Dorn Leonhart. That's a killer name, dude. Let me, uh... Ah, where'd he go? Or is it Dom? Sorry, I like it. <laughs> it was Dom. Yeah, it was Dom. <laughs> He says, uh, thank you, Chuck, for all you do and great knowledge and teach us and share for keeping it and, and uh, for keeping it real. Absolutely, man. Appreciate the super chat. Anyways, guys, that's all I got today. If you want to come on for a random live stream, appreciate all you guys do uh, and, and keeping me motivated. Um, being on YouTube, it's, it's the greatest blessing in my life. I love doing this. It's the best job I've ever had. And at times can be stressful because I, I do have the pressure of making content and having to be correct and factual about it, which I should be, but there's a lot of pressure with that. So I appreciate you guys keeping me encouraged. Um, I appreciate you having a bit of grace uh, with me when I'm saying, hey, I'm gonna post a video next week and then I don't, CCNA video once a week and I don't do that. So I appreciate the patience. Um, I, I'm extremely grateful for that as I become better at producing more and more content. It is a battle, uh, but I will get better for you guys. Uh, again, quick things I mentioned in this video. Uh, Kenneth Copeland got hacked. <laughs> it's interesting. Um, I did schedule my OSCP for December 11th. Uh, that's a Friday. That's going to kick my butt, I know. So I'm going to try and document my process and studying for that hardcore right now. If you don't know what OSCP is, it's like the gold level, gold standard of the um, offensive hacking certifications. And uh, there's a new version of Cali and Boson Encore has just... Or Bo I'm losing my mind right now. I've had too much coffee. I'm starting to crash. Boson... Uh, software who, you know, I love Boson. They're a sponsor of this channel. Uh, they have their new Encore courseware for their CCMP Encore. I'm going to be using that for my CCMP prep as well. So check it out, link below. And then of course, Pluralsight has their free weekend this weekend. So if you want to just check out Pluralsight, get some free training, get a sample, or just maybe there's something you want to learn about you can cram in this weekend, free weekend, then their entire site, uh, link below. And it does help out the channel if you click on those links. Anyways, guys, you're amazing. Keep studying keep staying focused, keep learning, learn things right now or later. I don't care. And uh, keep drinking coffee because it does help you stay focused. And it's healthy too, antioxidants. And just don't drink too much. You might end up like me, kind of just blah. Anyways, you guys are awesome. I'll catch you guys next time.
thought I was done. Suckers, you fell for it. Now, like any good Marvel movie, we've got our end scene credits, end credit scenes. I don't know. I'm losing my mind right now. I take this time at the end for the people who want to hang around, hang out, who are dedicated. I'm going to give away some coffee. If you're a fan of coffee or if you want to just buy my Network Chuck mug, which I don't have right now. I've got another mug. But I, I do have a store, networkchuck.coffee. I'm going to give away a $20 gift card right now. It's going to be a code I'll paste in the chat. Whoever uses it first gets it. you got to be fast. So get to networkchuck.coffee. Get that sucker in your cart, whatever you're going to buy. I recommend the Ethiopian or the Tanzania. Uh, fantastic. It's my daily grind. <laughs> um, <laughs> or a mug if you like tea, if you're over this overseas or something. Anyways, here we go. Here we go. You ready? Ready? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go find the code. I just got. <laughs> I'm going to paste it here in the chat. Ready? It's coming. Got to be quick. Ready? Set. Go. First person use the code. You get it. 20 bucks. Uh, if you start to check out and there's nothing there, <laughs> then you missed it. So uh, anyways, guys, appreciate you guys. If you want to support me in any way, buying my coffee is a, a good way to do that. You get coffee. I mean, come on. It's good stuff. It's my, it's what I drink every single day. And uh, other ways to support me is join my membership. Uh, it's, you can join for as low as two bucks a month. It's just a way to help me do more of this and uh, helps keep a lot of my content free. So anyways, I'll catch you guys later.